There's a really wonderful quote from the Upanishads that says, into darkness fall those who devote themselves only to life in the world, and deeper into darkness fall those who only devote themselves to meditation. But it goes on to say after this quote that the key to not falling into darkness is simple. It's balance. It's balancing life in the sense of spiritual living, right? What we term to be spiritual living and the rest of waking life that we might initially view when we start the spiritual path as unspiritual, that it's not part of the practice. And the truth is that, and this is shown very clearly in the Upanishads, that everything you do is a path towards truth, a path towards awakening. Like Ramda says, everything is a vehicle for awakening. And this is one of the most important reminders I think we can have is that while it is important to have a new way of thinking, of understanding our true nature, the nature of existence uh, as saguna and nirguna, as existence with qualities and in non-dual speak, uh, existence beyond qualities, the wholeness of being as one. While we're living in the body and in the mind, the best way to work with it, to use it, you could say, to come closer to this realization, closer to truth, is by treating everything we do as mindfully as possible, to continue to come back to this space of pure being, sitting in this awareness behind the ego, behind the identity, as often as possible while still partaking and being in the world. Like Jesus Christ says, be in the world but not of it. And so if there's one message I think that has helped me the most over the past few years, it's simply been that. No matter how often we may forget our true nature, or live and start to take our ego and our mind and our role far too seriously and cause ourselves suffering, anxiety, worry, whatever it might be. The one thing that can always allow us to slowly come back into alignment with the absolute, with truth, with the bliss of being, Satchitananda as it's known, is by treating everything we do as mindfully as possible. A monk who sits in a temple and faces a wall and meditates for three hours, he can be rivaled, you could say, in that meditation by somebody who spends three hours with full awareness and full commitment, being as present as possible, sweeping the house and dusting and washing the dishes and cleaning the counters. Everything we do can be a method. Everything we do is a vehicle, potentially, if we allow it to be. The problem with doing this and with where we forget this is that when we treat things as non-spiritual, oh, this doesn't count, this isn't part of the practice, we continue to dichotomize our life. We continue to create a deeper rut or a, a bigger fissure, you could say, between the life we have to live out there, making a living, doing whatever it takes, responsibilities, family, so forth, and the true nature of what we are. You know, these are two conflicting things to most people because we treat them so separately. We want to get home and, and read the texts we care about, maybe read the Gita or, or, or go into meditation. Then I can be in this Zen space. And while yes, that is a way, for a lot of people it's an escape from the mundane, you might call it, the regular, the day-to-day -day life. You're trying to use spirituality as an escape mechanism, as an enjoyment, as a kind of game for some people unconsciously to get out of what we have to do, our responsibilities in our day-to-day -day life. Because for some reason, the repetitiveness for many people of that day-to-day -day living, that can't be the path. That can't be what's going on, what we have to do. But like the very basic Zen saying, say, before enlightenment, we chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. Treating spirituality and our spiritual practices as hierarchically better or more special than everything else we do will just continue to drop us deeper into this elusive method of living where we have this spiritual identity and this egoic identity, this personal self, which is detached from that self. When in reality, they're one and we'll never come into that union, that space of fully being here and now until we start to see it all as one play as one happening in everything we do. You know, a Zen master still has to use the bathroom. They still have to maybe pay bills or cook their food. They're not just Zen masters when they're in the temple or when they're giving lectures. I'm not just in my practice when I'm trying to meditate or, or present myself as best I can and film a video. I have to try my best to be there as well when I'm with my family or when I'm waking up or when I'm frustrated and wanting to go from one place to the other uh, these are all opportunities. Everything we do is an opportunity to come closer to truth, to remember our true nature, to reside in the bliss of being as we go throughout life.
I just wanted to share that with you as a reminder to not just see these little things you have as specifically spiritual as what your path is and as what your practices are. Try your best to step back and to treat everything you do as a practice as often as you can. It doesn't mean you always have to do so. It just means the more often you do so and the more often you can come back into this knowingness, this remembering of your true nature, the less those things feel like non-spiritual occurrences or, or non-divine parts of life. And the more you start to feel the, the kind of effulgent beauty of being in everything you do. And that's a, it's a magical thing when you, can, when you kind of start to step into that or, or fall into that, you could say, way of living, where everything you do, cutting the grass, buying groceries, they're not just things that you're waiting to have end or hoping weren't going on or wishing you were off somewhere else. They start to be just as beautiful and just as enjoyable as anything else is because you're fully there and you're seeing the magic of the moment as it unfolds. And it's, it's a practice and that's why we do it. We practice to practice. The reward is the practice. And there's no better practice for coming into awareness, especially for me, I feel this to be true for my life, especially than trying to show up fully and be fully present and not in our reactivity, in our identity, in our ego, in the little things we do in life, because that's where it's easiest to get locked into the roles and into the identity, which makes us feel so much more detached from the people around us and, and the life that we live and the way the world is moving and flowing around us in this ocean. It's a great practice, one I love, and one I hope can help you as well. Rom, rom.